What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python, Pandas, Finance, and Sentiment Analysis tutorial video. In the last video, we basically back-tested this strategy, but we haven't visualized the results or really seen the results at all, besides what the output was per company. My idea is I want to see kind of like a conglomerate of all of the results and see, you know, how do we do with this strategy. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and comment out uh, this whole bulk here because we're not going to run it again. Uh, so we'll just do three quotes there, three quotes there, and it's interesting because this sorcery right here. Look at this. I wonder if this happens for all of y'all. It's like says it's just such a long list, I guess. <laughs> I'm really fast at typing. Anyway, um, we'll come down here, and what we're gonna want to do is visualize the results somehow. And so the best way um, that we can do that is we can reference the data that we just output. And I just want to put them all together. We could plot up literally every single stock uh, and see the performance of all of the companies. And I, mean, I suppose I could. we could do that as well. And maybe we will, but mostly what I want to do is actually have just a single line of the performance. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to say uh, define results. And here we're going to say date DF or date frame is going to be pd.read underscore CSV. And the CSV that we just created was performance underscore data underscore SP 500 ish dot CSV comma the index uh, column is time and finally parse dates equals true because we do uh, want to parse the date information. Next, since we're parsing dates, the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to do df.sort underscore index and in place true. And what this does is kind of what we've already seen it do in one of the other videos is it just orders by date. And the reason why we want to do this is the data currently looks like this, where we have the date stamp, the time, the stock, and then each time we go over to the company, stock ticker anyway, um, each company we go through it alphabetically basically and then of each letter in the alphabet basically or each one alphabetically that we go through then we go through the date so basically it goes start to end per stock so we got A, 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 Apple and so on all the way to the bottom so this entire document is actually not ordered by date it's ordered alphabetically first then you know the primary ordering is alphabetical then the secondary ordering is by date so first we want to actually order by date so we can do uh, what we're hoping to do here. So now let's say df.sort by index or yeah, sort index in place true. Now what we're going to do is we want to mesh all of this stuff together. We want to basically make an average of all of this stuff. And so the way that we're going to do that is I wish there was a better way to do it. I'm not really sure the best way to do it. Um, and what we're going to do is use pandas expanding mean. So what this does is at every step of the way, it does an entire average, basically, of the data. And so like with a moving average, that would give us like a, let's say a 20 moving average, it would only be an average of the last 20 plots, when really, we want to know the performance average of this strategy, period. Uh, and so that's like an ongoing thing. So from start to finish, what is our performance? And so that'll give us a decent representation of what our portfolio would look like if we invested into this kind of strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to say df and we're going to make a new column and it's going to be uh, x mean for expanding mean. Um, and what we're going to do is say that equals pd.expanding underscore mean. This is something built into pandas. What do we want to do this operation on? We're going to do this operation on df PC, which is percent change, right? Because we've normalized all this data into a percentage change. And then um, the next one is minimum elements, right? So we're just going to say zero. There's no minimum that we're going to you know, start with. And that's really it. Now what we can do is we can do return df x mean. And now what this is going to do is going to return a data frame of x mean. And basically it's just going to give us the index of date and the x mean. So, or the expanding mean, so we'll have date and that. So now we can actually plot it. So we come down here and what we can do is res for results equals results and then res.plot and we'll say label equals, 
I don't know, uh, holistic performance. And then we're gonna do plt.ax. Uh, actually, I suppose we could have this here. Ix line zero color equals k and line width equals four. And basically, this is just make a horizontal line on the zero mark. And so if we plotted you know, each stock one by one, this would make a lot more sense. Uh, so we could clearly see the zero you know, profit line, basically. Um, and so maybe we'll use that. For now, we'll just have it there anyways. And then plt.legendary, plt.show. Now, um, that should be good. It might take us a second, so I guess we'll go ahead and save and run it. Hopefully, we don't have any errors as well. Oh, you know what? Here, we have to do one more thing. Sorry, I hit Control C to uh, cancel that one from running. What we have to do is we have to come over to our data. See, we said we wanted to index by time. That's not going to work, and we wanted to index by PC. That's not going to work because if we look at our data set, um, the first column actually has none of that. Okay, so what we need to do is we're gonna have. Whoops. Uh, we'll just add this first row ourselves. So hit enter there. Do time uh, stock, I suppose, and then we had time stock price PC. Okay, that should work for us. Time stock. Let's see. Time stock. Pro actually, you know what? I think that was actually funds, right? That wasn't the stock price. Right, so actually not price, that's funds. Okay, funds. And then PC for percent change. So um, now we've got the column title, so we'll save that. Let me close this. Let's run that one more time. And now uh, this time, hopefully, we <laughs> will have a result. Um, that would have gotten very angry with us had we continued on. So, uh, so this should just be like a single line and we can see what kind of performance we're seeing already. And because obviously our hopes aren't too high because our strategy is literally this. Here is mine anyways, it plotted up. So this is our performance overall or on average basically. So if we had a portfolio that was comprised solely of this strategy, this is kind of what we uh, could expect to see. So initially we have a little bit of volatility here. I'm going to go ahead and say that that's, well, I guess we're not, we didn't start until Jan 13, but I'm not sure that, I think that by, I can't remember if, when, what I said in the initial, when that, when the rest of the S&P 500 comes on board, but I'm guessing that's what happens here is we have, okay, all of the other S&P 500 stocks, because initially we only did like three companies, and then we kind of branched out to 12, then we did like, 115 maybe and then finally I just said okay let's do the entire S&P 500 so anyway actually not too bad we have a little bit of drawdown here and then you know here and then we have this massive spike here and then from actually, really this point onward uh, pretty flat linear line okay so um, not bad the return here is pretty pretty poor uh, probably not even beating inflation with a 5% increase so definitely not happy about that. You're definitely not beating the market in this scenario either. I mean, from Jan 13 all the way to now, we're probably like, I don't know, 50, 60%, if not more, we could look, but of the S&P 500 returns. But anyway, uh, at least we're not in the negatives and we think we might be onto something or at least the strategy is somewhat accurate, but you can't really make that judgment. You would have to, I suppose basically from this point onward, you could start to make some sort of judgment like that just simply because we don't have any drawdown and you know the S&P 500 definitely has drawdown points at various points along this way so it's nice to see that we don't have the same drawdown points but the question is can we modify this a little bit to see some better results because really I mean just because we have a little bit of drawdown with the S&P 500 say you buy this SPY um, you're gonna choose to do that versus uh, this 5% over a whole year so uh, a few things that we have to consider as well. One, we're not paying trade costs still. So this is not including any sort of trade you know, costs. So if this is a high frequency trading, as in we're doing like you know, multiple trades a day, um, 
now we're kind of going to probably be in trouble and would maybe make ourselves in the negatives, depending. So we still have to kind of factor something like that in. How many trades are we making? Um, but also the question is, can we modify this strategy at all to improve our return? So if we want to modify the strategy, we'd have to rerun this this data. Um, well, I've commented it out, but we'd have to rerun you know, this, and it, it exists, it just doesn't want to show it to us. So we have to rerun it. And so the answer to that, though, is yeah. So if you, like, were, for example, here, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more positions we could make. So here, we're actually only entering into about, I don't know, this, this covers less than half of the possible positions that we could take into account. So the first thing you'd want to do is really add to this to make it to where you're more willing to enter into positions. Now that's going to also increase your trade frequency. So we still want to know like what is our actual trade frequency here, but um, we're missing a lot of positioning for sure as far as you know when we'll buy and sell. We could also change how much we buy and sell at, but also most importantly what we're missing here is any sort of relation to where the market is at the moment. So I mean and also what's the actual overall sentiment so in a market it might make more sense to just buy the companies that are just have positive sentiment and to stay away from the ones that don't or if you're gonna buy into a company's trend maybe buy the one that has somewhat positive sentiment because we're pr fairly confident it's gonna keep going up because sentiments very positive um, you could also flip that and you know be more of a value investor and only buy companies where their sentiment is the weakest or something um, so there's definitely a lot of other strategies to look into and then also my biggest thing though is that we have to kind of we need to be able to look at what the price is at the moment and because like I said before sometimes price goes up and sentiment goes up because price went up and then we're finding ourselves buying at the high and selling at the low so that's not good at least from what we see we're not doing that the majority of the time but it probably would be in our best interest to eliminate that <laughs> And, um, and then maybe add some more strategies to this. So if you add a few more strategies to this, I imagine that we could probably improve this quite a bit. So maybe we'll add a few more position entering um, parameters just to see. So that's probably the easiest addition that we can make to this script. But then after that, we probably moving forward since we're kind of happy with what we saw there, we need to incorporate trade costs. And actually probably I should incorporate, we'll incorporate trade costs before we add any more parameters because the addition of parameters is, can only really increase the trade counts. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and do that too. So we'll add the trade costs into this. Um, and then we'll probably have to regenerate a new, a new uh, output dump, but that's okay. So anyways, uh, that's what we have to look forward to. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, regarding everything up to this point, go ahead and leave those below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until next time.